I just think Russell doesn't talk about Elon Musk enough. <laughs> and I wish I could give him the opportunity. What was the I first thing Russell I said to... when I saw that story? Yeah. yeah. He wants to bask I'm in the I'm getting ready for a Russell Pat fight. Here it comes. I don't even All know right. what the topic is yet. Here it goes. <laughs> so two years ago, um, and you know, honestly, we were, um, I don't want to say praising, but we were on board with this when it was announced. But the two years ago, Tesla installed a huge battery in Australia. And it was not long before that huge battery was um, already jumping in and helping out the Australian grid. Now, um, this was in uh, South Australia. And it's, I think they said it was only about like one and a half million people. And I say only, but, um, you know, in the grand scheme of big cities and, um, and other things, it's, it's a nice test bed for something like this. And um, so what this article in Popular Mechanics does is kind of goes back. It tells a little bit of the history and, and then talks about how 100 megawatts and the battery absorbs brief blips from the grid so that if there's a hiccup in the regular grid, the battery kicks in. And it has been able to flatten out the grid. The blackouts and brownouts um, are all but gone. They're in the past. And even the, um, I don't know, what do you call him? Prime Minister of Australia, the guy who was pretty much hated because he was blaming green tech for causing the blackouts, even though they were absolutely unrelated. Um, he's eating crow because he was so against this and now everyone in Australia is saying I want one of those mm -hmm. um, so I mean that was that's it it's just we're looking back two years and we're saying this huge battery has proven what we've been saying for years which is battery storage that can um, accept energy from wind and solar and store it and then feed it back when it's needed um, or even take peaker plants off the grid so that they don't have to spin up these, these usually very dirty oil-burning peaker plants when all the citizens are asking for air conditioning, for example, in the middle of the summer day. These, right. these battery packs, they should be deployed in, in much greater numbers around the world um, for municipalities. Businesses should have them and municipalities should have them and yeah, can't say enough about that. Yeah, when you have storage, it's it's a whole lot easier to get your grid beyond, say, 20% renewable. Um, and the peaker plants, if you have a peak, a spike that's unexpected, they don't respond instantaneously like a battery can. They take seconds to, to spin up, which is why you were having brownouts. I mean, it makes perfect sense mm -hmm. to, to have... I, I like to think about it like a, a, as an energy cache. And uh, if you didn't have a cache in your processor, it would perform a lot worse. And that's sort of what this provides to the grid. It's something that allows it to respond uh, instantaneously to unexpected demands. It's it's great. And uh, Tesla's been this battery has more than paid for itself in, in a relatively short period of time, which is exactly what utilities are looking for. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. Two years later, the experiment's done, and the results were great and should be duplicated. I want one of these. Christ. I've ordered. I've ordered uh, three of the power walls for my house. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of on hold due to the current uh, situation, health, public health <laughs> issue. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, that well, say a power pack or a small, um, um, either the uh, what do they call the mega pack? Yeah. Yeah, the new one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, for some of these larger businesses, hotels, uh, skyscrapers. That would be a much better choice for a building UPS because it monitors its health. It doesn't all of a sudden just die in the middle of a crisis, and you, you had no idea that hey, the 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 thing in between our generator and our and our building power has been dead for six months. It, it actually right. lets you know. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Even if you're just doing energy arbitrage, charging it up overnight, using it in the morning, avoiding yeah. peaks, that'd be great. Exactly. Yeah, there's there's so many uses for small, medium, and large uh, customers. Uh, like we were saying just last week, uh, PG&E is now putting in that large uh, plant in Southern California uh, to eliminate a number of peaker plants. Uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia has a small one. Uh, Australia, of course, with the large one and growing. Um, so it, it's definitely been proven, and 
what's nice to see, it's being proven in multiple different jurisdictions. So more and more people are getting exposed to it. More and more utilities understand how it works and where the benefits are. So uh, I think there's a bright future in it, especially with batteries getting more and more dense and uh, becoming more and more cost effective. It, it just it just seems that things are going to get better for this uh, uh, this type of installation. We need to get and this in hospitals. An, there's another weird little side effect. Um, I didn't realize this until I started looking at the South Australia pack uh, that uh, when you are having a, a problem meeting the energy demand, you can actually have um, frequency slowdowns. I, I knew about voltage sags. That that's obvious. I mean, I'm wearing this shirt. I should I should understand that. But uh, but uh, I didn't realize you can also have changes in frequency, and that's actually what the the Tesla battery is triggering off of because the frequency changes are uh, an early indicator, and so they're able to respond in in milliseconds. So it's it's really incredible. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be great at the hospitals. You can uh, not just have the battery backup, but also uh, you can kill those generators because they are not uh, healthy to, to have around. Most of them run the cheapest yeah. fuel oil diesel you can mm -hmm. find. and Diesel, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's I not mean, exactly right. what you want around people who are in a sensitive health state. Oh, right. Yep. That's why we were talking about what's really nice is when renewables get cheaper. That's going The economic Im implications of that are, mm -hmm. are huge. So there's a lot of there's there are a certain percentage, maybe a small minority of people that will do the right thing for the right reasons, and other people that will just do whatever's cheapest and they don't care. And so when that changes, that's going to be a, a huge change for our entire economy, our entire planet, for everybody, for our public health. It's going to be awesome. The green revolution yeah. is going to happen. Uh, keep waiting. I just keep <laughs> waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one of the biggest problems with the adoption of this technology has been proper storage mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. gain a lot of energy, just sheer sun, sunshine falling on the land, but we can't store it without a lot of loss or not able to get it out in time. And as you talked about the access times to the battery and how this was an improvement over what used to be there, that was always a problem. So... If we can get that technology deployed and improved, that would be something great here. And the biggest problem we have is that, um, you know, so damn cheap. <laughs> so yeah. It's like um, we want to be able to have the improvement and to have the sustainability and pay five cents. Yeah, and right. that's not going to work. And every time I see people putting off the improvement and saying, well, but it's so expensive right now. And it's like, when did it get cheaper in the future? Yeah. That doesn't mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you've got all these politicians that like to point out, oh, the sun doesn't shine uh, at night and the wind oh, doesn't God. blow consistently, oh, blah, blah, blah. Question. And then you got a place well, to put the put this. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, and that's true, but, you know, I, I've... I've sat through an awful lot of local government meetings, <laughs> and I can tell you that for the same granola hippie types, who also happen to have two houses, <laughs> yeah. they pull a lot of the same argument. It's not that they don't want it, they just don't want to pay for it. Yeah, and that's yeah. a big problem, because we're, we've really kind of stopped seeing these kinds of advancements as community-focused, a positive good that's long-term, even if we don't get the benefit right away. And, right. and that's something we used to have more a sense of as a nation, and I, I feel like we've kind of lost that. Yeah, sometime I in totally my lifetime agree. we went quarter to quarter, sometime in my lifetime, yeah. uh, instead of long term. Yeah. Oh, I know why. Right. Greed is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys, do you guys, the Wall Street movie. But, you know, <laughs> swinging, swinging back to um, the Tesla battery in Australia, do you remember how much Australia paid to have this battery installed? Um, it's 116 million, something like that. Yeah, 116 million Australian, 76 million American dollars. The, I didn't ask how much it cost. I asked how much did Australia pay for the batteries? Oh, they're net, they're net profit now. Yeah. Because Australia didn't pay for the batteries. Uh, yeah. It was a private billionaire who knew it was the right thing to do and challenged Musk to do it. Australia didn't pay for it. I'm willing to bet that if Bill Gates said, I have $150 billion and I'm going to install a solar farm, or, or uh, Jimmy Carter, 
oh, oops, he did. <laughs> the United <laughs> States would be more than happy to reap the benefits. I mean, this gets back to what, what Georgia was saying. You know, you got people that's like, well, I don't want to pay for it. It's too expensive. It was, and, and in this case, it took one person to step up and prove why this was a good idea. Well, not just any one person, the one billionaire. Let's just well, be clear, because totally otherwise there'd be a lot of people stepping up, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach a little far back for me, since I wasn't around for that part of, of, of human history. But Jimmy <laughs> Carter did install solar power on the White House. And what did Reagan do? Came in and took it down. Unfortunately, we've hit like we hit like a level of animus that even something that is a net good, even if you don't think it's all that great, people will dismantle just for the sheer. I don't like that. I that idea. I don't like that ideology. I don't like that person. They are different than me. And I don't know. It's it's yeah. literally just. You know, we're just kind of sitting around shooting each other, shooting ourselves in the face when it comes That's to true. Yeah. just doing something yeah. good. I'll throw out a good him. idea if it's proposed by someone I don't like. Oh, yeah. wait, no, come on. I just want yeah. to prove my tribalism, so I will oppose anything without even thinking about it. It's ridiculous, but 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 human nature. <laughs>